Alright you guys, welcome back to another match play. We're pumping through the round two games. Uh, as of the recording this video, there's only two more round two matches. And then we can uh, get into the good stuff. Yeah. A um, couple notes on this match. It will be uh, triple sped because it is a longer one. And uh, it actually is broken up into two parts. Uh, not two YouTube videos, but halfway through the video. Or not halfway, like almost towards the end of the video, I'll have to... The, this video will end and I'll have to double click on a new file. Um, just a uh, fair warning there. But it's going to be Weavile versus Retreat Amplifier. Um, uh, Retreat Amplifier won a really good game. We thought this deck was a lot weaker than it was. And then we played it and we were like, wow, this actually shows potential. So some of those decks that maybe we will revisit um, at the end of the uh, tournament here. I don't know why Grady, why didn't Grady attack? Oh, he probably already has him in his hand. That might be why. Uh, yep, he already has him in his hand. Um, but uh, trying to think of the matchup here, Weavile does have a lot of stuff that has a free retreat, so that amp might screw with some of the um, actions of it. The other thing about it is Retreat Amplifier also has a, a fair amount of spread. Oh boy, uh oh. I'm recording this at like 5.30 in the morning because I can't sleep. So apologize for the yawns, they will happen. Um, but when do they not? Let's be real. Um, so the retreat might screw with him in terms of the fact of that, yeah, he's, um, uh, he can no longer has like a free retreat. And then the other thing that it might do is, um, uh, he does have a lot of low HP. I would say like the highest HP is probably that, uh, the evil tall. And outside of the evil tall, it's really a whole bunch of 90 HP attackers. So the spread damage might actually start coming into play, um, midway through the game, but uh, at the start of the game here we're having another classic double spirit tomb start um, nothing too spooky there um, Grady does have that energy on the evil tall which is a little scary um, that evil tall break is just a really good card um, I feel like you can make a deck with like, ooh, ooh I have a deck idea, evil tall break and Coco, and just that like maybe like one or two other things, but like that's all you do Ooh, that sounds spoopy. Mmm. Actually, legitimately, that sounds like a really good deck, just those two cards. Maybe some other things. But anyways, 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 anyways. Um, double Spirit Tomb start. Uh, trying to get set up on my side. Grady is already set up. Damn. Uh, he's got the Hail Weavile out. Oops, he told you not. Uh, he's got the Hail Weavile, which is uh, going to set up a lot of the uh, uh, Darkness Blade. I think it's Darkness Blade. I forget what Evil Tall's Evil Tall Breaks attack is. It's going to set that up quite considerably. Um, but since Grady has uh, two retreat for the Jealous, and he has to uh, commit a second energy, which is fine. It's setting up for some Dark Patch plays. Um, and unfortunately, he gets the Crobat drop, um, which is really not great. Uh, it means I really can't push anything up here. Um... I you know I needed him to attack into the spirit tomb to knock it out instead of actually dealing damage to the jail send, or to anything for that matter. So kind of helping out. I have flow stone. Oh shit! Oh shit! Okay, sorry. <laughs> kind of hoping I have like a flow stone or something like that. Uh, trying to think what Grady was doing there. Okay, he's gonna swoop teleporter the uh, uh, the spirit tomb out of there. He doesn't want that spirit tomb there. Um, just really no good during that mid game phase here. I think Greedy might be trying to find a way to get like some sort of plus power. The energy removal does help too. Uh, just putting a lot of pressure early, and I just don't have really any way to answer that. Um, so there's the floodstone, and there's this, the thorn tempest. Tend to everything. Uh, if I can get a DC, it uh, looks like I'm just going for the scoop up. Uh, we're gonna try to thorn tempest a couple more times, maybe thorn tempest and then touch DC and try to swing. I guess that's really the only plan here. So there's another Thorn Tempest, and then there's a Lapras party for teammates. No, he didn't damage me. Sorry. Uh, maybe. No, he didn't knock me out. Why am I? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I even uh, even screwed up on the rewatch. Um, Lapras maybe for. Oh no, yeah, he did teammates. Ho 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 ho. Because of the Crobat. So even better. Um, looks like Pharaoh's Seed and a double. It looks like is that a scramble? Or is that a double rainbow? Scramble energy. Uh, making sure I can attach to the Pharaoh Thorn. Looks like I can, so it is going to start spreading. That's a considerable amount of damage here. 
Um, looks like we are going to swoop the Lapras away for the, for the Grimer. Um, and the Muck to add more damage. Woof, this is a big turn. Broken Time Space really doing a lot. Uh, Retreat Amp is just kind of like Stage 1 Rush in the fact of, like, you're just setting up a whole bunch of Stage 1s and, like, just trying to swing with whatever attacker you can. You can attack with Ferrothorn, you can attack with Fortress, you know, that sort of thing. So it looks like I'm going to come up and just... Let's see, so it's 10, 20 plus all the Retreat, so it'll be 40 to his support Pokemon. Uh, let's see, actually it's not knocking out the Benary quite yet. There are a lot of, um, yeah, I can play that, right? Because like, there's Teammates, Oak, Sycamore, yeah. So I can play that. It is going to be, I think I'm just kind of looking for ways to extend this hand, I guess. But uh, a whole bunch of spread here. Really nice. Greedy will have an attachment available, however, and that's, like, if he attaches, he can kill the active. Um, if you can find a way to, like, kill the bench, that's even scarier. Um, but, uh, I just need a way to deal with this evil tall break. I can, I can take some knockouts on all of his support Pokemon next turn if I can get a couple Thorn Tempests off. Um, that'd be really great. If I could get a de-evolve, I could knock some stuff out. Um, but dealing with this evil tall break is going to be a problem. I don't know what Retreat Amp really has to deal with that. Iris is interesting here. He might just be playing it to get rid of it. Because the first attack's not going to do enough damage, right? He may be looking for... No, nah, he can't retreat, so it's not going to be a retreat play. He's a... Yeah, I mean, he can't afford to have this Ferrothorn stay in the active, so he's going to have to kill it. Maybe it's just Iris to burn it, sort of thing. I'm going to go ahead and heavy ball here. Um, if I could heal the gel or something, that would be great, but Heavy Ball might just be too, uh, um, oh, I have the Bronze Orb for you, too. I mean, the Bronze Orb seems like the right play, I guess. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to calculate the Fortress damage here. It's one, two, three, four. He's got four retreat cost, so the Fortress is going to do, uh, I believe, 80 damage, 140. I don't think that's enough. I think Evil Top Break is 150. So I would need like a, a Devo Spray Evolve DCE to knock him out, or the Stadium DCE to knock him out with Ferrochus. I think that's the way I would go. Um, problem is that that uh, Weavile will come up and swing for me. So if I can get a D Evolve Thorn Tempest, like if I can Thorn Tempest this turn, and then Porygon Z, uh, and then swing at him with Fortress, that'd be all I would really need. So let's see what I get here. Bronzong and Bronzong break, actually. Uh, the hero. The hero plays. I got a Dowsing Machine for Oak. And play a Lux Ball, I guess. Or play a Lux Ball first and then Dowsing Machine for the Oak. Yeah. Just kind of trying to thin that deck a little bit. Don't really need the Spinner Rack right now. Ooh, Grady's got a really good hand. He's got a Dowsing. He's got a Scoop Up. He's got a lot of stuff. and He's got a lot of things there. Um... So, really just looking for that Porygon Z if it's in the deck. That's really going to, really, really going to hurt Greedy. Um, if not, I can... I don't know what I'm pointing at here. I don't know what I'm trying to think of there, but I need to... Uh... Oh, so yeah, that will be a knockout. Looks like... I don't know why I didn't attach. I think I should have attached to the... To the uh... I don't know. This is this is odd. I should have attached. Ooh, we might be just. Whoa! Why? Did, yeah, I didn't attach for turn. What the heck? All I did was metal links. Wait, did he goop me? No, he couldn't have gooped me. Cause I, well, maybe he did goop me, and I just played my stuff. Um, then yeah, that makes sense. I guess I was just hoping for that DCE. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention there. Um, ha! <laughs> Yikes. Let's see, so the uh, Dow's Machine is going to, or sorry, the Item Front is going to grab the Misties. We only need this Porygon Z. I think that's really all I can do. He must have gooped me because I would have gotten it with that Ultra Ball in my hand. Um, I don't know what I'm promoting here. I might have honestly just, like, retreated into, uh, well, no, I can't retreat into the Muck because if I retreat into the Muck, he just takes the double knockout, like, on a, 
like I need to keep the gelicent in the active. The problem is the gelicent's the one with the floatstone on it. So because if the gelicent goes to the bench, he'll take a double knockout somewhere, and I just I can't afford that. Like literally on anything. Um, so this Lapras for a for a Guzma might be just the optimal play for Grady here. I mean that's what I would do. I think if he's got it in the deck, I would Guzma just to take a double knockout on something. Probably the Muck. Maybe even the bronze on break. Kind of rough to see what he would grab here. Um, nope, he's going to grab Mallow. So Mallow might grab the Guzma if he's looking for one extra card. Um, I don't know. So it, Guzma must have been gone because he had to use a gust of wind to get it. Um, but yeah, this will be a double knockout on the bronze on break and the Jellicent. So to get a knockout back is going to be very, very hard unless I have the... Unless I have Porygon Z. That, that's like something I'm really going to need here. Especially like Porygon Z Fortress Muscle Band. I think, right? One, two, three, that's 60. I would need one more, like 10 damage somewhere. One more damage modifier. Ultra Ball Porygon for Uxie. I don't have very many cards left in my deck, so this is a little actually kind of sketchy. Um, looks like we're going for Porygon, and then we're playing N. So there's the first supporter. I still got all, I still got a lot of ways to draw cards here, so we're not out of the water yet. I think this is great, especially with this Mallow here. Um, I think I can get what I need to get the knockout, and if I have that Porygon Z, I see I'm saying Porygon Z over and over again. But I don't even know if this deck plays it. It, I sure hope it does. Uh, it's going to start finding its way into more and more decks as the, uh, um, you know, once the next tournament rolls around. Uh, so there's an upper energy. I'm trying to deal some math here. It's 20 plus, right? 20, 40, 60. Eight. Oh, so he had two retreat already. So plus the two more. Yeah, that would be a knockout. It's 20 plus, right? It should be 20 plus. If it's not 20 plus, then we might have miscalculated that. I don't know. But you see how Porygon Z would have just been super big this game. Uh, could have had a way to like de evolve, um, you know, take the knockout on his support Pokemon there and end him. Because I, I end last turn, right? So if I will go end Porygon Z uh, and just leave him with no support Pokemon and no attacker, that could have just been devastating. So, um, but, you know, regardless. I need one more spread. I need a couple more ways. To, I need a couple more times to Coco, I think. I need maybe just another Fortress out, or not Fortress, um... What's the uh, the Ferrothorn or the Bronzong? There's multiple things to to spread and take knockouts. So I have a lot of knockouts just sitting on the board. And I think I just kind of just need to take advantage of that. Grady's in a in an okay spot, but I need to take advantage of it pretty soon here, just because um, uh, if he gets more set up, I'm I'm we're both kind of in this like middling stage where we're both just like kind of set up, but it could be better. Um, so we're just kind of jockeying for that position. And, th and these type of games are the U150 games that actually are not very snowball-y because nobody actually gets rolling. Um, it's just like fragile game states over and over again. So, But, I mean, Grady will take a knockout on this Fortress, for sure. <laughs> it's just how he does it is going to be the question. Uh, I don't find our junk arm a little bit of an interesting situation. Or, sorry, so it looks like I'm letting him grab the scoop up on the, uh, Crobat. Or he's taking it back. He doesn't, he, I think he still has one more supporter, because he downloaded the AZ. He might have actually just played the AZ, but, uh, regardless, this will be a knockout here. Like I said, he was going to be getting a knockout no matter what. Uh, a Misty's Wrath, there's a Floats, there's the Fluffy and the Porygon 2. Uh, those are the two cards that I grabbed, so... Um, looking to just kind of dig this turn. I have all three support Pokemon set up. Or are we... Ooh, looks like we're actually taking that back. Saying that I could probably get some sort of retrieval. I probably need a trump card this turn. Um, just because I'm really low on resources. Oh, wow, this is awesome. Yeah, we're taking... Ooh, this is spooky. Good job, Alex, here. Uh, now if I can hit a trump card, too, then we're even in better shape. Uh, looks like we're taking a Lysander and then a knockout onto his uh, one and only attacker. Or one and only support Pokemon. Oh, yeah, see, I got like no cards left in that deck. I think I needed a trump card like that this turn. 
Oh, looks like we hit item finder. This might be like for computer search or something. Oh no, for goop which was in there that got discarded. Even better, so we bought ourselves a turn. Maybe two. Uh, if Greedy doesn't have any Pokemon in his hand, he might, I mean, I don't think he can afford to come up and hail. I mean, who knows? Greedy's looking for ways to get back Trump Card. Problem is, I don't think the Trump Card's even in the discard pile. I think the Trump Card's in the deck. So he's got a Guzma. He might try to stall me. I see that Guzma there. It might be like a Guzma on the Claydol and then a Hail. That might be the plan of attack. Looks like he's debating it. Yep, so there's the Guzma. And I'm saying, do you want to go into... Oh yeah, because of the retreat cost. Do you want to go into uh, Coco or do you want to go into the... Um, uh, Weavile. So there's the trump card finally. I had like three cards left in deck or like five, four or five cards. So I wasn't going to be, I was probably going to hit it that turn. So we're just, right now we're trying to find um, probably a way to get out of the active or maybe just an attack. If I can get a knockout, that'd be even better. But there's a computer search. That's really going to help. So we'll see what we get off this. It might be, it might be a Guzma? Oh, it's going to be... I have a Mallow in my hand already, I think. That Mallow was already in there, I saw. So the computer search might have gone for Bill. Um, just to... Because I already Cosmic Powered. I like to keep that in the... Oh, uh, what are we replacing it with? Oh, le hello. We're replacing it with Broken Time Space. Looks like we're probably going to Bronze on Break then. Oh, we're going for Oak again. Trying to go for that Bronze on Break. And the... Uh, Oh, there's an Ultra Ball and there's an Energy in the discard pile. Looks like we are going to try to take the knockout on the Porygon, it appears. I would bet you that's where the knockout goes. I don't think I can kill the Weavile, can I? It might go down to the Weavile. I can't really see how much damage is on there. No, we are going to take the knockout on the Porygon. So it's really not a lot of support. And he still has to retreat this Coco somehow. He does have one retreat um, because, of the, uh, because of the Muck. So, there's a Beybase, definitely going to be for Ooxie here. I don't see why he would go for anything other than Ooxie. Yep. So, if Greedy can get anything, I think the Broken Time Space might have been like a little bit of a miss. I mean, I needed to go for the Bronze on Break, and I think that's kind of what it was. Like, just, oh man, I really need to hit this sort of thing. But, um, I could have just tried to grab the other Bronze on and use the, uh, the one, the, the three energy one and scramble energy it, that could have been in the way, and just then the spread to everything, instead of the snipe, because now I have this bronze arm break in the active, and it's just kind of awkward. I mean, yeah, I can hit like a switch in our escape rope, but, and Grady also has to hit, what, five Pokemon to knock me out, because bronze arm is 130 HP, so, or four on a damage modifier. Um, just, like, I think, I, I think I agree with my play there. I can't, I can't say if I'm right or wrong there. Um, I just kind of need him to miss a knockout here. Um, but he is able to get the Claydol back out off of the Ooxie, which is just gross. Um, I really need to miss a, like, if he can miss a swoop or a scoop up, even better. Um, because then he can't get the Porygon out either. Um, I'm sure there's ways that I can, uh, uh, take the knockout on the Claydol. Um, there's the Retreat. And let's see. Oh, he is going to hail everything. And this scramble energy, we were misplaying it. Uh, we thought it was one for each. We just totally misread it. Uh, it was corrected in the last time we saw Retreat Amp. Um, and uh, we just goofed. You know, I, Weavile ends up winning this game, so so it kind of screwed up the first round of Bronze Long Break. Um, but, uh, oh, not Bronze Long Break, but um, the first round of Retreat Amp. It, it, that matchup probably could have been swayed either way. Uh, probably could have. It probably would have lost. Um, but it didn't affect this matchup at all. It's because Weavile wins anyways. Because Weavile's in the final four. If you didn't know that, um, Weavile is actually a very good deck. I don't think we built it necessarily correctly, but it's really really good. Uh, so here's another N. Hopefully taking the knockout on the Claydol and making Greedy draw dead. Looks like he has a uh, a time space distortion there. So if I can bounce the broken time space. All the better. 
Looks like I'm P-Tone for the Porygon 2 to draw some more cards. Maybe even to get the broken time space out of the way. Uh, Super Rod just to tidy up some stuff. Give some more consistency here. And attach the... Looks like a, that's a um, Metal Lynx probably? So yeah, we are playing that incorrectly with the uh, scramble energy, the way that works. Uh, and there's the double hedge just to get the clay right back out. Um, I needed him to hit one of three on that. If he had hit one of three, I think it would have been a completely different story. Um, oh, debating the Mallow. Uh, the Hail is actually pretty relevant now because now he only needs four. The damage modifier won't, modifier won't matter. Oop, yep, we're going to go into the... Uh, uh, I didn't realize that ended as quickly. The second half of this video is really short, so I'm trying to figure out what happened on the second half of this video. So, Greedy is going to Mallow. He might be looking for game? I don't know how he could get game. I'm trying to think here. Why are we, what are we... What is happening? Uh, he's got three prizes left. I'm not sure. Could be some sort of Coco play... Perhaps. Maybe that's the case. There's a scoop up. Uh, oh, he is. Sorry, it is the, uh, the rule of evil uh, Weavile. So let's get a. Let's. That happened way way fast. Let's take a look at how that happened again. Oh damn. Play. Come on. Go down to to normal speed here. Um, so the rule of evil, Weavile, the rule of evil Weavile does 60 damage to everything with an ability. So it's look like it's taking a knockout onto the Uxie, onto the Porygon 2, onto the Claydol. I don't, uh, onto the he's taking more than enough prize cards to win the game. Completely forgot about that. So yeah, the, the swooping into that play um, and winning that way um, was where the game ended. So yeah, that's how it ended so quickly. But yeah, a uh, long game for it to be a H to 3 price to count. Uh, but nonetheless, pretty good game. If uh, we had played the uh, Bronzong uh, the correct way, that game would have been way more lopsided. But either way, Weavile takes the win there and moves on. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.